Alright guys, we'll be doing a face reveal in 3, 2, 1. Hello and welcome back to another review. Yes, another review. I'm almost doing like daily videos at this point. But you guys have been really supportive. So might as well make videos while they're popular. So here I have another Rise of the Beasts mainline toy. This one was one when this was first uh like leaked. I was really excited for this one because Big Monkey. It's big Optimus Primal. And turns into something very unique, which we'll get into when we get to the transformation. But for now, let's take a look at the role mode. So, if you're, wondering, if you're wondering why you can only see, you know, half of this, it's because this guy is huge. So we're basically going to be starting off with size comparison, just because I really want to show how big this thing is. So here is Leader Class Grimlock. That's right, Leader Class. You can't really see from the angle here. Let me move this up. Primal is taller. Here is a Masterpiece, and again, yes, Masterpiece, who is actually smaller than Grimlock, but you can see, Primal is still bigger. And I would show him next to uh, Revenge of the Fallen Leader Optimus, but he's currently at the very back of my shelf and I don't really want to bother trying to get him. But, here is Primal next to a Titan-class figure, it's Metroplex. And just for some more general size comparisons, here is Kingdom Primal, Mainline Primal, Pablo, and air razor so you can see this guy is huge yes yeah, so you can see what we have here is essentially an old leader class figure and i mean old leader classes in like you know like pre-war for cybertron like prime wars no i mean like revenge of the fallen so i apologize if the camera angle is weird i like on this uh kind of desk thing here there's not enough room for me to pan my camera back enough to get him fully in frame so it's kind of gonna have to deal with this but this is a very nice looking, like, figure, despite the fact that it turns into a... That's not good to say now, he turns into a mask. You've seen the intro. So yeah, for a figure that turns into a mask, he actually looks quite good. The only kibble we really get is just these two kind of flaps here, and then his big nostrils on his back. But besides that, like, he ends up being pretty clean. In the, uh, actual transformation, he's made a lot less clean because... Yeah, you have these... These, uh, straps here, just hang out. What I like to do is basically just, this front one, just kind of stuff it into his chest, and then close that back up. Just to kind of help clean up a bit more. You still got these ones on the sides, but it's not as bad. Let's bring the camera up here. You can see he is more so based on his original, uh, like, Beast Wars design. At least in terms of the robot mode, because of course he has all that color. Very original Beast Wars head sculpt, though with a bit of movie flair. You can see the chest here is actually, um, like, the forehead of the mask, which is actually a pretty clever use of kibble. And the arms here, and a very interesting thing is that he has, like, fur mold onto here, but it's brown? Yeah, so overall, this is, like, a very nice-looking robot mode. I also really like the proportions. He just looks really beefy, although I feel like maybe the lower arms could have been a bit, bit bigger, because this is primal, and his holding is monkey, so big monkey arm as his articulation this is all going to be a pain to film uh his head this least favorite part of the figure nothing there why they added a ton of extra articulation joints that aren't used in the transformation yet they couldn't give him head movement although i guess i can kind of excuse it because it is on one of those uh kind of panels on the back like a lot of like legends class bumblebees but it's still really annoying but you can i guess get downwards movement so th th there is that i guess and mainline pablo stays winning because he's the only one who actually has head movement and then as for the shoulders move like this and yes you're hearing that correctly those are ratchets so not only is this old leader class size not only does this also have like very nice kind of old leader feeling plastic but it also has very nice ratchet joints. I'm not, I don't usually like ratchets because a lot of the time they can end up being like super, super tight to the point where it's like scary to move it. And you do get that one part, but the shoulder ratchets here are actually pretty well done. As for outwards movement, we, oh, I'm surprised. I didn't think we would get any, but no, we do get some outwards movement there. As for 
elbows here, we get bicep, here this ball joint, and then you actually do get a bit of an elbow bend, even though the ball joint is at an angle where you wouldn't really get that. And then, surprisingly, we get a wrist swivel, which I'm not expecting. We get waist swivel, which is ratcheted for some reason. It actually sounds quite nice. Surprisingly, the hips are just simple ball joints. Those are usually the parts that you'd want to be ratcheted. But, oh, and just ball joints. You get okay splits from them. And then the knees. This is that part where it's just really tight and I don't like it. Ugh. And, like, the ratchets on that don't feel like nice ratchets. They feel like the plastic is snapping. So, yeah, I don't really like those. But then the ankles... These are his friends. Sorry if it's, like, blurry or anything. I can barely see the camera. The ankles, you actually get ankle tilt because they are on ball joints. And you can get forwards and backwards movement, which is really nice. And they are just held on by, like, these little struts, which does seem a bit scary because that's holding up the whole figure. But it seems like it is fine stability-wise. It just looks kind of scary. Yeah, so surprisingly, this is a very articulated figure. And he doesn't even have any, like, accessories or anything, though I guess it's primal. He doesn't really need any. I just really wish he had some kind of head movement. And so something I'm actually wondering, if you look at his uh, hands, right there, you can see that they have holes in them. And while he doesn't have any accessories, like I just said, I wonder if those are like 5mm, so he can use accessories. Let's see if the Shatling gun works. I... Oh. Okay. That... So... It doesn't work the race just because you get the legs in the way of the peg, but that is indeed 5mm, so all of these Rise of the Beast figures that come with, um, little, like, weaponizers like this, you can use their accessories, just why it doesn't work the race because, again, that, um, like, the legs kind of get in the way of the peg. Let me get some kind of weapon. Alright, so what I have here is the War for Cybertron Optimus Prime Axe designed by Azim Bengsta. This is, of course, for War for, Cy War, War for Cybertron Optimus Prime, because the original version did not actually include the axe. Of course, the new uh, Studio Series 1 does, but the original does not, so this is much meant for that, and this is the Chrome version. And yes, he can hold it. Giant monkey with giant battle axe. This is actual, like, we. I think we have reached uh, peak Transformers here. I'm not sure figures are going to get any better. This is just... This is the ultimate Transformer. That surprisingly works pretty well, like, scale-wise with this. I can see him using it as, like, a little hatchet. So that... Yeah, that actually works. And I kind of like an axe as, like, a weapon for Primal. That, that's actually pretty cool. And I think that axe is, like, one of the few weapons that would actually scale well with this guy because of how big he is. Because even, I feel, a lot of leader class weapons from, like, modern leader class figures would feel, like, too small. So that axe actually works really well. Yeah, so overall, this is a very nice row mode. It has, like, good paint, good sculpting, portions are nice, surprisingly great articulation besides the head. I'm still mad at that. And he can actually hold 5mm accessories. Now on to the transformation. So, this is my first time, well, second time doing this, because I trans—I basically transformed this into row mode for the review, and then just started filming, because I did want to get this out, like, as soon as possible for you guys. So, start time the chest, I did earlier. Rotate his entire torso section up. This is very annoying to film. You fold his head in. And again, I'm sorry if you can't see this well. It's just, it's really annoying to film. And then his arms, you move up. And they do have kind of like a stopping point, which does limit the articulation a bit. And then, kind of want to bend his elbows inwards. And there are these, uh, like, kind of tabs that it uses, where they're kind of circular at the end. And I don't really like these, because they're just like, too secure. So, it's scary. There you go. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So we just fold that in. It is a very solid feeling figure. So that, now, we have forehead, and you can already see the eyes there. So again, it is really cool how the uh, mask is, like, well, the robot actually forms parts of the mask. It's not all shell formery, because, like, these are the arms, this is the back of the head, and then this is actually the torso, which is really clever because if you didn't, if you didn't own this figure, you wouldn't realize that that's actually the Ramo torso. And then get the legs here, this part. I don't really like the legs just because they have those annoying ratchets. So I'm going to fold out 
this panel and then like tabs in and then rotate those up fully bend his legs oh that doesn't feel good and then you're gonna want to you're probably gonna want to do this before when you fold the foot in and then this you can rotate around and then we'll basically just do the same thing on the other side and before we actually get these into position we'll uh like yeah before we do the feet we're gonna need to move uh these panels here and they will lock these in position so let's just quickly there have these together and then we we'll take these huge side panels let's bring them around and we're gonna want to have them into the arms up here and then down here we tab them into the legs there we go it's very satisfying to kind of move around just these big panels because i know a lot of people don't really like panel transformations i do especially on uh movie designs and it's very satisfying to do it here because it's like just a bunch of big chunky panels yeah so once we get those all in and the feet they come packaged in the box like how do I do it? Kind of like uh, like that almost, like folded into the middle. We're actually supposed to do it tells you this in the well it doesn't tell you in the instructions, but you can see it. You're supposed to have them folded like that, but if they're not positioned correctly, then that can like hit your chin. Or yeah, yeah, your chin, and it really hurts. So what I like to do is just kind of move them outwards like that. These do fall off every once in a while, but it's pretty easy to just pop them back in. I think it's folding out like that, although, for the sake of this review, I'll transform these uh, correctly. And they don't really, like, tab in, they just kind of just sit there. Yeah, and then once done that, try not to rip off the foot again. But once you've done all that, then you are done. And the final product, I can actually move the camera down now, is Monkey. Yes, yeah, so that's actually, like, a surprisingly really fun transformation. And then the monkey mask itself actually looks really cool. It's surprisingly accurate to the movie appearance. Well, from what little we've seen from the trailers. Of course, there is some added color with the blue, but I actually kind of like that. And then, of course, you can see the back here, the primal just there. You get this kind of strap here. You can't, oh no, you can't adjust it. And then, let's put this on, which I'm going to go do real quick. Yeah, so I am wearing mask right now. Uh, the one thing on this is... This is obviously meant for, like, a two-year-old, and I'm not a two-year-old, and it's, like, pushing on my nose. No one knows, piece just putting a lot of pressure, so that part does kind of hurt, but I get used to it. And you already saw in the intro how this looks when you're wearing it. So I'll quickly just get that off. There we go. So there's not much else to be said about this mask. Like, it's, like, a roleplay mask, basically. They usually release things like this for, like, movies and shows. I think I have, like, a Transformers Prime one. Except none of them before have actually transformed like this. And the Rise of Beast Mainline does do, do something which I've really been missing recently, which is just weirdness in Transformers toy lines. Like, lately with all these ones, like Legacy, Studio Series, we basically, we the second something is, like, leaked, you basically know what you're going to get. It's going to be a super accurate representation of the character, which is fine and all. But sometimes I do just, like, really weird and wacky stuff like the Rise of Beast Mainline. And this mask is that it's like Optimus Primal Mask, that turns into Optimus Primal. It's like the definition of weird and wacky. Another thing is, it's really good value. I think it's around like Voyager price, but you're getting something that's old leader sized, has really nice plastic, and ratchets. This is also part of the required uh, outfit to go see Rise of the Beasts. Remember, if you're a true fan, yeah, you will wear this to the movie theater and get laughed at by everyone. As for size comparisons of this mask, here's a a gym, so you, you can see it's like basically the size of like a small head. Yeah, so that's it for my review of the Optimus Primal transformable mask, whatever, I don't know what it's actually called. Overall, just a really fun figure, which is what I've been saying a lot for like all this mainline stuff, but it's true. Yes, yeah, so if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, then don't. Bye.